Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Republican Level. But right now, we talk about a new era of American spaceflight. America, behind me stands a beacon of a new era. Behind me stands a blazing torch that will signal the beginnings of new forays into the stars. Behind me stands hope for NASA. Behind me is a prototype of a rocket that will hopefully one day carry Americans into space. The Saturn IB is a massive creation, but also signals the start of something far more massive and far more important. It signals the start of America's domination of the heavens. Some have asked me why we even bother, why we still even try to win some glory in space when Germany claimed it all those years ago, why we try to win a race that is already over. To me, it was never a race. It was a great quest for knowledge. It was a challenge to overcome. It was a mountain at whose peak lay the great beyond and a glorious future for mankind. We're about to embark upon that quest once more for our country, science, and for humanity itself. I'll not lie to you, this reinvigorated quest will not come without difficulty. There will be setbacks, waste, and possibly even tragedies. However, there is no reason to abandon such a righteous goal. I ask you, did Washington give up when he was stranded in Valley Forge? Did Lincoln give up when the South rebelled? Did the Wright brothers give up when the toll of the flying machine could not be built? No, they did not. America is a nation of indomitable will, and together we will show the world that they will that will by ushering in a new era of American spaceflight. Ignition, and of course we're still doing... Uh, liquid fuel is our feature, and I think we'll just go ahead and maybe get to the Saturn V research to be available to research. So, dust off the plans. <clears throat> the reluctance. A politician's investment for the further of humanity is appalling. Rather than spending money to put for potential gains in the future, most would rather take the safe bet and remain at a standstill. Our president knows that the value of scientific progress, however, and is willing to make bold and daring strides into the unknown and back it up with a budget to match. Our facilities still have old plans and proposals for various projects, including our own moon landing and other ambitious projects. Let's turn our engineers loose and see what they can come up with. As last time, at the end of last episode, actually, we did see that we have now 54 Republicans, 10 Democrats, and 36 right MPPs, while last time, the presidential election, ooh, look at that, nice, ooh, still can't do it much there, and we're moderately liberal for Supreme Court. No, no I can't see the next, last one, but whatever, cool, we, we, we beat them. Extremely well, like ridiculously well. Uh, right now, I'm not going to sink any more money into that just because I don't want to have anyone, the approval to continue going down, even though I don't think that really affects it. But we're waiting to do stuff here as well, just because oh, we're going to need a lot of research points. I'm not sure if it's really worth investing into high power relay. Ever onwards. Long ago, John Glenn entered the world of politics on a whim, in a whole wild hope of standing up for the interests of American space travel in an age where it seemed people had given up on it. Now instead of giving the oath of the office to ascend the presidency for the second time in four years, he had helped to create a new legacy of spaceflight that he had inspired millions of Americans, all while bettering the lot of the people back down on Earth. As he stood before the people once more, he prepared himself for the tasks ahead in the hopes of taking America to even greater heights. These turbulent decades have not been kind to the American nation, yet we have pressed on. We have emerged from a time of darkness and uncertainty into a new era of hope, progress, and scientific understanding. Ever since the first pilgrims set foot upon these shores, America has been a land of explorers. It is in our blood to go forth into the unknown and find a place for ourselves there. Today, we once more celebrate the spirit of our nation and affirm the true knowledge and understanding cannot be belong to one man alone, but to all men united in the desire for a better world. The work cannot stop here. When man first created fire, he endeavored to improve further. He heated his forge and made steel. He boiled down steam to drive his engines. He let a pillar of light under himself and soared into the heavens. Each new discovery brought not only greater opportunities, but also more bountiful quantity of life for all. We too must embody this proud tradition. Our nation will continue to innovate and continue to push the boundaries of what is possible, and all will be made more prosperous for it. President Glenn gazed up upwards as the crowd applauded. Even now, there were Americans up there, and his words could even be heard in their capsules floating above the Earth. He hoped that he could. Take them further and broaden their understanding even more, higher in orbit, to the moon and back again, perhaps even beyond. Semper prosorum. P prosorum. Huh. And we're doing the Saturn V. Our best scientists and engineers have come back with an odd plan, or an old plan, to which they've made significant modifications. This mighty rocket is the largest one we've ever constructed and carries a hefty price tag to match. The Saturn 1 to 4 rockets were originally designed just before the end of the U.S. space program in an effort to prepare for our own moonshot. And our new design will carry Americans to the moon and beyond. There's still further modifications to be made before putting it into production, but the work of the old NASA has made our journey much easier. Great. Great, 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 great. As we're still making some enrichment plants as well, so don't ever want to forget about the enrichment plants. We're going to even make them Oklahoma, Michigan, all good places. Uh, increase public support, 57% ain't enough. We have enough money for now, I think, which is never true, but whatever. And we did do probe AI B2 things, just because it says when removed, this will give us a increased base preparedness, but also increased budgets. If we do cutting edge metals when selected, um, and it's active only for 60 days, this will increase the base preparedness for Diana and Ares missions, but also significant or slightly increase of budgets. To me, that sounds like it only affects you for 60 days, and after that, it's done. It's over. And the same with the high power relays. When you select it, increase the mission rewards, but it's only active for 60 days. 
Does that mean it, you get less rewards later on? It sounds like you shouldn't, but you, it sounds like you should. So, I mean, we're doing it, this one now anyways. Prepare a launch pad. Ah, screw it, we'll do it anyway. If this doesn't go well, then we'll just I'll do stuff off screen. But, human stress test, probably. What is this one? Uh, rocket construction air range. Ah, we'll do that one. A next-gen delivery system. Having the industry to develop and produce nuclear weapons is only the start. We must continuously invest in and refine our delivery systems. Accuracy, yield, and survivability are words to live by. We plan to win a nuclear war, thankfully. The Pentagon has proposed a new generation of missiles, the Aero System, which that should deliver on all these criteria. Hopefully, they're still getting a surplus. A couple comments included. What does the invest reserve mechanic do? Well, from what it seems like, all it does is the more you invest, the higher your nominal GDP growth will be for a little bit. And that seems like all it is. It helps you make sure you're not in debt. But other than that, I'm not really sure what else it does. That seems like like it, that's the only thing it does, which is really weird, but whatever. I think that's the pair. Of course, we've got the complex up there, but that stuff doesn't really matter. We're going to focus on ships, because we can. And put more nuclear stuff. And probably get some more schools. Michigan needs schools. What is the state of education in the state of Michigan? Let's not ask those questions. All right, bring in technicians, of course. Oh, 40%, that sucks. We need to have successful missions that raise our support. Good, good, good. Here's our budget. Eh, we're okay. We got 20 days left for that, too. Not bad. Oh, Saturn V. Oh, now we need all that extra research. We'll be unlocked if they're available. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Yes, good. <clears throat> Anything else? We won't get extra political power later on. Yeah, that's not bad. 14 days. And then the power of the atom? Hmm. We could. Daggers on all sides. Help raise our public support, which we do need. We do need that, but. New training regimens. Ooh, yeah, that'd be good to do. Having stress tests. Being in space is understandably harsh upon the human body. With effects of zero G force and high amounts of radiation, not to mention the horrific sense of isolation, wearing down on astronauts. Getting there can be even more stressful as extremely high G forces during launch and re entry of the potential to scrap entire missions by knocking astronauts unconscious. In order to counteract these potential effects, we can harden our cadets by including high G-force centrifuge training, isolation chambers, and simulation zero-G exercises in other training regimens. That's a smart idea to do. Very smart. 91% is not good enough. We're close to 100%. There's still a chance for failure, and I do not like failure. Failure is not an option, some might say. Oh, V3s. But, eh, I'm not going to go on that, just because we do need the Saturn. Yeah, I do want to get that one done, unlocked as fast as possible, so... Uh, anything else? Joint test program funding? Yes, 48% again? Holy crap. Mm, we could do that, we just don't have to. Yeah. I mean, I like the research speed, don't get me wrong, but... Public approval is shooting, shooting down quite a bit, but does it really matter too much? Maybe it does. Especially as we push onward into 74 for the elections, as well as... Um, 76. But 76 doesn't matter, because there's, no, there, there's literally no elections. There's none in the game yet. Or the mod. Uh, temp tech's good. We want more growth. Even with that, that's not bad. Next gen delivery system, thank you very much. Human stress tests. Good, good, good. Actually, since we're here anyways. There you go. Advanced IFBs, which I almost never researched because I don't like them very much. 73, there you go. Gen interceptors that we're not going to use. And we do need to rework in the suit. Preparedness of uh, man missions is super important. Great unknown. After all, we do all this stuff. I'm, we're going to go here quite a bit too. Next gen try. Ooh, we can do this one immediately though. <clears throat> mm. Base preparedness of man missions though. Because I actually tried to do a man mission, but it was the base preparedness is just so low, it's not even worth doing. Not yet. We need to research a lot of stuff too. Ooh, next gen try though. Oh. But we get research facilities involved. The current American space suit designs are meant for short excursions in zero-g environs of low Earth orbit, and as such, are simply not equipped to handle long trips in space, especially not on walking on the moon. If we not only want to send a man to the moon, but allow him to land there, two new spacesuits designs must be commissioned. Firstly, we simply need more modern, streamlined, general-purpose spacesuits, something that our astronauts will wear while in space. It will need to be relatively light, flexible, and unobstructed, able to survive in low pressures and moderate conditions. The other variety of suit is a more difficult engineering challenge. It would be our extravehicular suit. Expected to perform everything from short spacewalks to basic repairs, to extremely lunar excursions lasting several hours. It must not be too heavy nor too bulky, as their astronauts must perform basic tasks, like walking and sensitive tasks, like manipulating specialized tools. This extravehicular suit will be one of the cornerstones upon which the future of American space exploration is built, but without it, we're going nowhere. Oh, center five. What is this? Landing controls. Ooh, that would be good to do as well. Yeah. We definitely need that. We need a lot of research. Our technicians, and we'll send it off. 52% is not bad, and bring technicians. 
yeah, do you have more research? Hmm, 50% so fine. Nice, Saturn V. And that would improve landing controls. Nice. Good stuff, good stuff. Got me though? Not bad. Not bad at all. Actually, how are we doing for poverty? 21.45 is not bad either. Let's see, extreme bureaucracy. Still getting better. See, oh, actually, expertise might be going up. Okay, innovative industry, that'd be good. Ooh, yes. Um, schools, we're already doing schools. Indiana, schools in Indiana. There we go, and enrichment. The other one, the Dakotas in Nebraska. Well, I guess North Dakota's already maxed out, but that's all right. Five days left, not bad. I'm just kind of waiting for this one to fire as well. Yeah, keep mod, don't really need it. One day's left. All right, 98% perfect. Come on. Come on. Also some non Onward, upwards. Mission rewards. We got 54. Holy crap. 54 research points and three public support. Only three public support, man. All right. Oh, Minerva. We did these two. Orion and Minerva. We've not done Eros yet. Is it unmanned mission? Does that test our missile arsenal, giving us an increase to war support, as well as buffs to both rocket construction and air range? Um, Man mission. I tried this one earlier, so let's go with Eros next and see what happens. Why does it take so long to do that one? How much money do we have? And we also I have a cup of coffee here to keep it nice and warm, though. 55% approval. 23.5 million buccarinos. Nice, not bad. Ah, improved landing controls. Look at that. 64 research points. Nice. Man missions. Um, or base preparedness. Which means we can launch them faster, but everything is for man missions. Everything is for man missions. It's got to be. 20 days left. Not bad. And then we work in the suit, improve insulation because we do need to get that research. We need to get we already have the heat shields done, deep space communications relays, ready for anything. Getting extra political power would be nice. Honestly, it doesn't really matter for us just because we already have almost eighteen hundred already, so that's pretty good. Fifty-four percent, not bad. It only went down just by a little bit. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I'm feeling pretty good about this so far, but then again, we could be doing this wrong. But new recruits, Houston, Texas, nine a.m. The president of the U.S. steps off his plane onto the grounds of the country's new and improved astronaut training center. Instantly, the surge of nostalgia floods to the former president or former spaceman's head as his private tour begins. It seems like not long ago this was his second home, even with all the new gadgets everywhere. The feeling of familiarity still lingered. <clears throat> president Glenn watches with delight at the high-tech gravity rooms, the realistic flight simulators and the country's future space marines operating it all. The president was glad that even with all the technological advancements. NASA's message still say the same. It was time for lunch with the new recruits. Within a few minutes of conversation, Glenn could tell that these guys weren't as nervous about the great beyond as he was back in the day. If anything, they were nervous about talking with the president. But those feelings were gone after an hour. Pres president Glenn spent most of his time both reminiscing on his own experiences and marveling at all the, all the up to date training methods. As the day progressed, President Glenn had, say, had to say goodbye to his new friends. As he boarded the plane for Washington, the man couldn't help but feeling ecstatic about the future NASA with him at the helm. At the same time, though, such a drill was creeping up on him. If something bad were to happen, he would be solely responsible. If a missile accident were to cost him American lives, he would have to take all the blame. Given wonders whether or not those dreadful feelings would cause him to lose sleep. The future of space exploration is bright but fraught with risks. Oh, and there's a lot of risks. Hey, research facilities begin to improve. Nice. Very, very good. Follow it up with improved insulation. Uh, you know what? We're going to do next-gen triad because we, we have to wait. We have to wait to get more research points. So next-gen triad. The effectiveness of our nuclear arsenal depends on the retention of multiple means of delivering a salvo of atomic fire on our enemies by land, by sea, and by air. Continued development of these three legs of the nuclear trial will be essential in convincing our enemies that they have no hope of winning a nuclear conflict of the U.S. or with the U.S., and that their best interests lie at the negotiating table on our terms, just as the Japanese learned a few years ago under Wallace. Also going up anyways, nice. Not bad. 32%. 44%. Gus Hall's doing some work. Yaki. Ah. Oh. Yaki, yaki, yaki. Bringing them technicians. Um, oh, here we go. 61% uh, is not bad, actually. It's not bad at all. 15%? Not bad. Pretty good. Not there yet. Yeah. Oh, infrared telescopes. What is that? Let's see. Greatly increased the amount of research points we get from Minerva. Minerva missions. Greatly increased the amount of research points. That might not be bad. Let's see. Because right now we're doing what? Oh, there it is. Yay! Also, cut down on the far right as well. Come on. Thank you. Good, good, good. And what else? Uh, why not? Because we can, right? Because we can. And then we'll... Do that too. Thank you. So we're doing arrows. That was Minerva, right? We just saw that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. From Minerva. 
Arrows might not be bad to do because it's probably pretty easy to do. Yeah. Arrows. One. And eh, we're at what? 61%. That's not bad. 61% is not bad. That's actually not bad. Feeling a little squeezy about this one though, but it'll do that. Why not? We're we working them gosh darn suits. I want them to look pretty. And useful, but pretty. Yeah. We got pretty suits. We're we working them suitorinos. Let's get some more ships. Operation success. Good job, guys. Good job. How's it going? Asheville class. Nice. All right, what's next? Uh, blueprints. Yes. Just in case. Things have been getting a little funky around here. we got to make sure that they're all okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, 20 days left is not bad. Mm, nothing up top there. That's fine. Next-gen triad. Next-gen targeting solution. Ooh. The daily pickle power does go up. We get more cost, though, which I don't like. Won't really matter too much. It's not that much. Of course, it is percent of GDP. 1%. Next-gen targeting system? Hmm. Well, we'll probably do more space stuff next. There you go. A little bit of lag, but happy July! Yeah, Riyadh doesn't really matter too much at all, which is good. Oh, we can still do this one, too. We're not doing manned ones yet, so we can probably wait just slightly. Um, what's this one? Improve insulation. The balanced vacuum of space is a place of extremes, seldom more true than in temperature. Without an atmosphere, there's no protective shield against temperature changes, so the temperatures that a spacecraft experiences can range from a scalding 200 degrees Fahrenheit and the sunlight to 300 degrees below zero in the shade. While in previous years, our astronauts would simply wear heavy pressure suits while in space. Our future forays into the heavens will require a new solution. Astronauts simply cannot be expected to wear such a bulky equipment for days or weeks on M. To counteract this problem, our crew modules will have to be equipped with the best insulation available, such as they may survive both the icy and scalding regions of the void. Yeah, absolutely. Um, launch it. We could launch it right now, but that's kind of dangerous. So that's kind of dangerous. Thank you for the money. Next gen tried. Oh, thank you very much. And we only have 44 research points, which is not good. It's fine, though. Improve insulation. The great unknown. Who knows what lies beyond the minuscule coil of Earth's influence? Who knows what dangers lie above the sky? And the great boundless void that surrounds all? Who knows what dangers we may encounter when we enter that void? If the American space program is to be prepared for landing on the moon and eventually Mars, we must harden our system against damage. We must prepare for the every eventuality, from communications failure to solar flares or radiation to cabin fires. All these potential problems and more must be planned for. There must be a backup for every possible system and a protocol for every possible disaster. Stealth tech would be very nice. You have a auction? Let's keep going with that way too. Not bad. There we go. You know what? Uh, I'll do that anyways. I don't mind getting a little more funny for now. It's 44 research points. Not bad. 44 research points. And we're what? 10 days left. Not bad. Oh. Enrichment. Enrichment. Even though it doesn't really matter how much enrichment we put in here, just because we're not really spending that much on making more nuclear missiles, but still. 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 We invest? No, we still have a surplus. I love it. Use public support. About seventy percent is nice. Good, good. Actually, do we have any? Oh, hold on. One day's left. Eighty-six percent is pretty good, though. That's already pretty good. To blot out the sun, Jack lay, sat down on the couch with a nice cold bottle of suds, ready to enjoy an hour to the TV before heading back outside for more yard work. He clicked down on the TV, a small antenna catching only the most powerful signals over the air. The display flickered alive, showing a black and white broadcast of what appeared to be President John Glenn, examining some variety of bomber aircraft. Several of them flew overhead while the President himself admired a stationary one on the ground. The President and his entourage then moved over to the side of the runway they were standing on. The, pre the President turned to face a reporter who was slightly out of frame, so, what do you think... This new bomber is so revolutionary, Mr. President, asked the reporter, in a half-condescending, weirdly intonated reporter voice that they always use. Well, for starters, it's easily the fastest bomber in the world. The B-1 Lancer can reach a top speed of over 1.25 times the speed of sound, you know? A lot of people ask me why we just don't replace bombers completely with missiles. Well, for one, I, if we have a fail set, uh, false alarm and we send out, start sending out bombers, we can always bring them back. With a missile, once you launch it, it's not coming back. A pilot's discretion as well. He's able to gauge the value of the target, whether it's a threat or not, or whether it's worth hitting it. Hitting it. In short, I think that the new B-1 Lancer is going to be greatly strengthening our nuclear try to simply a new fine jet. Now, let's watch one of them give us a little show, huh? With that, the president turned and gave a thumbs up, presumably to the pilot of the bomber he was examining just moments ago. The massive jet fired up its engines and promptly threw the president on his butt, rolling back like an armadillo, and his aides following suit, scrambling over to help but only being knocked down themselves. Well, darn, muttered Jack. Must have been a heck of a jet to, fly, to knock the president on his butt. Tell me that wasn't live. Upgrading transmitters. Academic base could begin to slowly improve. Research new fuel tanks. Ooh, and ready for anything. I like this a whole bunch. Upgraded transmitters. 
No great advancement of humanity or achievement of humanity was done in silence. All of mankind's creations from the great periods pyramids of Giza, to the Great Wall of China, to the torches, or the torch of the new colossus that beckons the huddled masses into liberty, are a consequence of our unique ability of communication. A lunar landing is easily on par with the spectacular monuments of our species, and thus no different in terms of needing communication, most especially regarding contact, while the mission is in progress. To ensure that we remain connected with our astronauts during the forays into the stars, we will upgrade the majority of our Earth-bound transmitters, as well as develop new comm systems for our crews of capsules. Without the help of ground control, they will get nowhere, after all. From the highest heavens to the deepest nether, they will travel farthest, who travel to call the unknown. Exploration has been crucial in the development of humanity ever since the first human diaspora. diaspora. Our curiosity has driven us to explore every inch of the globe and then some searching to advance our own mind to feed the sense of adventure. As society progressed, the mighty Romans advanced into foreign territory fearlessly, boldly, or boldly. They were looking for a home, a place to settle after the war. Likewise, we saw conquistadors bridge the gap between the new and old worlds. People like Christopher Columbus, discovering the very continent we live on today, or other explorers, spread the knowledge across the globe, permitting entire civilizations to connect for the first time, where people's manifest destiny shaped the country. And in the superpower it is today, even much of our ocean remains unexplored. But now is the time for us to shift our focus to the stars. As the Earth edges closer and closer to nuclear annihilation, we know little about the great beyond in our current state. <clears throat> There is no hope for human progression, as long as we stay here, unable to quench our thirst for adventure. We must rally America to meet the upcoming challenges and reach for the stars head on. Lest we fail and plunge into the fires of a deceased Earth, there is hope to be found in space. Oh, yes, 70%. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, now, hopefully we can launch Eros 1 and do well with it. Not gonna lie, I tried this a few times off screen, and it didn't go so well for us. So we'll see what happens. Hope it goes well. But, of course, we're still doing upgraded transmitters. Uh, fuel tank research would not be bad, but next... Gen tracking solution. I want to wait to do this one, but eh, we'll see. I do want to do this one as fast as possible, though, so. Fuel tank research. A fuel tank is a rather simple thing, perhaps the most simple component of any space bound vessel. Obviously, without fuel, a rocket will not fly into reaching the moon and Mars, or rockets will need an extraordinary amount of it. As such, it becomes necessary to take a step back and re examine our fuel tank design, tweaking certain elements to create the most optimal design possible. Certain features, such as advanced alloys for more robust construction, as well as more sheathing and insulation for electrical components, will allow our rockets to be much safer. Most important, however, is weight, for when the cost of launching a pound of payload into orbit may be in excess of $1,000, it must be considered. To ensure that we can launch more for less, inf investigating lighter materials from which to construct our fuel tanks may prove worthwhile. Alright, boys and girls, let's see if we can launch Eros. I hope it goes well. I mean, at 98%, it should do pretty darn well, right? Right? We need more approval as well, so there you go. Do that. And here, come on, please, please, please. Actually, okay, I'll, okay. Ooh, awesome. Oh, we should have waited, actually. Oh, we should have waited. Oh, maybe not. We got that one done. Onwards and upwards. Oh, look at that. Okay, so because we got the other one done, maybe, or because just first time doing arrows, um, there's a chance that we'll get more base war support. Look at that. And also because it's the arrows one, we do get more base war support. Change the popularity of liberal democracy. Ooh, that's not bad. The Minuteman program, 5% more air range. So right now we're at. 44%. Mission rewards, 54 research points, and 12 oh, 12 log support, nice. That didn't change it all here, huh? 40, oh, it did, 1% more, nice. Oh, that's so good to do. Oh my goodness, Minerva. Base preparedness for Diana and Ares. Suddenly increase the budgets, that's fine with me. Um, mm, do we want to risk it and do a man mission that allows us to put a, the tragedy of the Apollo behind us and get to the moon? Take three successful Diana missions to achieve that goal. I think it might be best to wait. I, when we do that one, I want to do like... If, is, is it possible to do all three in a row? I kind of doubt it. I think you need to cool down, don't you? Ooh. Because i like to do that one. Increase the amount of research points we get Minerva. Ooh, that might not be bad, though. Ooh, it's already 73. How about we do this? Ooh, speed prepares for Ares and Diana. Ooh. Yeah, we definitely do that one. We need a lot of research points. We can invest in this one to get a lot more research points from Minerva. Because mm. we do that one eventually. Let's do Minerva first. Greatly increase. We'll try first. Let's do Minerva. And then we'll do Diana next. Because we have, we have to do this one eventually too. So why don't we do this one and then do that one. So Minerva first. Hopefully we, we have more increased base support for a man. So we'll see. I'll give you doing this completely wrong. I'll be honest. So... Ready for anything. Thanks to our initiative, the U.S. of A. and our space program are as prepared as can be for the dangers of venturing far out of the Great Void. With the finalization of these great advancements in technology, spacecraft design, and procedure, it seems as though no astral disaster can prove too challenging, or any distance too great to overcome. America, for her astronauts, and her space program are aware of the great difficulties that lie ahead. But now they need not fear. Houston may be assured there will be no problems. I guess let's hope so. 
Joint testing. Uh, we have enough money for now. We'll be fine. Nice. Increase the budget. We're okay for now. Oh, oh, deep space communication. Rewards from all successful missions when are added. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Go and do that one. We're going to need a lot of research points. I already knew we were going to need a lot anyways, but still. If we go below 2 billion, I mean, it would be a little concerning, but not that concerning. Even under a billion, we're not bad. Power is still getting better. I mean, I love this. Oh, yeah, also, I was checking here to see how our uranium was doing. We only produced 64. We're importing 180, which is not bad. I love trading with other people. Especially allies. Members of the OFN. Uh, okay. Minerva. So what's our base preparedness? Is it still 61%? Hopefully it's better than that. It is... Oh, 81%. Oh, that's nice. 7%, 15%. Oh, heck yeah. So, let's see. This gives us 15, and we can do like the one that gives us 5. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, that'd be so nice. Yes, yes. Oh, that's so nice. We can just launch it repeatedly? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Faster, faster, faster. Faster, harder, longer, better, stronger. Um, increase the budget. 74% is not bad. You know what? Increase the budget. No, you know what? No. 250. We'll do that. Why not? It'll lower this by a little bit, but that's okay. I love, I love the Glen so much. It's just so much fun. I love Tino way too much. Like, if you follow my channel, you know I say that all the time. I love Tino, except when it's frustrating. But new training programs. To be chosen as an astronaut candidate is to be one of an extremely select number of individuals. And actually become an astronaut is an even rare honor in short. It requires an extraordinary amount of talent, followed by an equally extraordinary amount of training as time has gone on. Astronaut selection has gone down, and the training has become inadequate for the realities of modern spaceflight to rectify this issue. We must implement new training regimens for astronaut candidates to ensure they are up to speed with the current realities of NASA. In addition, we'll begin pulling some of the most exemplary pilots that the U.S. military has to offer as candidates for the next class of NASA astronauts. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I think it's supposed to go by 15%. Whatever, that's fine. Oh, 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 okay, we did the one with us five. Now I'll go by 15. Hey, do we need more political power? Honestly, no, not really. Because now we're getting how much? Over two a day. Yeah, we need this one too. So before we launch any, ooh, but in an area though, in an area, and oh yeah, we'll we we'll definitely need this one. Redeployable fuel tanks, decrease the cost of all. Ooh, that's not bad. Not necessarily that we need to do that. The cost really isn't too much of an issue, but we we'll definitely have to get Gemini Mark II next because we're going to be launching the manned mission in space. That's the next one. And get more research points from Minerva missions. Oh yes, please. Ooh, add on deep space communications. Ooh. For some political power? Heck yeah. Mission... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Operational success. Good job, guys. And suppress the right wing of the NPP. Yes. Well, whenever as it comes available, of course. Please public support. Yes, please. Uh, not bad. SSR Ostpoison. I'll go in, but that please go ahead. Oh, this is one of the ones that actually appears if you get far enough in TNO. So. Ready for anything, my friends. So after that one done, of course, the new, new training regiments would be great, 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 great. Kind of miss the old days of TNO before Toolbox here where it says, oh, we had a new level of poverty we just hit. Or new low level, or I guess new high level of poverty, so kind of miss that. 12 days, 13 days, not bad. Let's do the next one, and which we'll go over here probably. Ooh. The power of the atom. Mm, both taxpayers and the military will expect to see benefits from this. Um, if we can wait to... Oh, we can do the Star Speckin. Oh. Ooh. Okay. We have persisted through budget cuts, doubting congressmen, and the humiliation of the Nazi moon landing to retake our spot as a leading nation in the exploration of space. NASA's efforts have met with success after success, and we must ride the wave of momentum even farther afield while enthusiasm is still high. The administration is abuzz with an energy not seen in years, in a sense that we are on our way to greatness as we reach out to touch the stars. Project Viking? Oh yeah, let's do all of this stuff. And we'll do this stuff last, because we, we need more time to do missions and whatnot. A hundred percent. Higher technicians? Nope. Nope. Ninety-four percent. Um, are you spending cap? No. Yeah, why would we do that? Minus one percent, minus one percent. No, we're good. Honestly, 94%, let's keep that high. Mm, anything else we need here first? Nope, looks good to us. Let's launch Minerva 2. 100% chance, guarantee, is not, is probably completely unrealistic, but whatever. Mission rewards, 64 research points and 5 public support. Nice. Alright, so the last time I did say that was be the last one before we start doing another man mission, so. Base preparedness for man mission when added to a mission. Um, Diana. Ooh. Ooh. You know what? Let's save. Yeah, I want to make sure that we do this correctly. Um, we could try Diana. 
a look here. So how far are we? Based preparedness. We might want to wait to do that one first, but... No, we're not going to do that one. For Diana and Ares. By a lot when added to a mission. You know, we'll do this one first. It's cheap enough. We'll do both of these. Yes. I do want to do this one, but we'll do this one, Diana, first. Oh, this take three. 60 days. Holy crap. That's a long time. Holy crud, daddies. Holy crud, fathers. <clears throat> I mean, if we can do recyclable fuel tanks as well, that'd be good too, but. That's a long time. Yeah, I should have done that one a little bit earlier. 99% though is not bad. That's not a lot of money. Okay. Oh, 84%. Ooh, that's not good. Alright. New training regimens. Oh, and we're still building more stuff up. Even more nuclear reactors. Every state in the Union is going to have a nuclear reactor. So we can't use private investments anymore. So I guess that's why we said no more like corruption stuff. We can do that. So we might as well just add nuclear reactors to every single state in the Union. Something Glenn would truly love. Nice. More base preparedness, please and thank you. And then the stars beckon. Lessons of Gemini. The Gemini program was one of our greatest successes, giving our first practical experience with manned space flight and the first taste of stars for the future, or stars for President Glenn. While this opportunity may have been squandered, the lessons of our program must not be forgotten if we wish to continue onwards and upward. On the back of the Gemini program, we have achieved greatness, and we now wish to surpass those heights. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. The economy is still barely growing, but it doesn't matter as long as Glenn and America keep shooting for the stars. Nothing else here? Good. Alright, what are we going for research here? Georgia class. We love Georgia. Score by small amount. That's fine. Not bad. Still have 22 research points. That's pretty good. Oh, what was that? Oh, research. Cool. Okay. More naval stuff? Sure, why not? Thank you. We have 2,000... Okay, this is kind of ridiculous. 2,000 political power. There you go. 2050, not bad. Cut of the programs, no joint testing. Oh, we'll do that one right now. Nuclear reactor carrier stuff. Nuclear whatever. There you go. 74. Of course, we can do even more infantry stuff, but whatever. Military funding. Just keep an eye on everything here. About a week left. Not bad. Stars beckon. Lessons of Gemini. The heartbreak of Apollo. The worst day of John Glenn's life was the day of the German land on the moon. The pain and anguish it brought, the long days of sorrow and depression gave him a resolve never to fail, fail or fall behind again in the race for the glory among the stars. We cannot allow ourselves to be held back by past failures. Instead, we must learn the lessons of those failures and allow them to propel us forward. The Florida's field speech. Senator, congressmen, scientists, engineers, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, before my election, I spoke on many subjects. Before most among them, I spoke of the need for America to keep looking upwards. We are the descendants of explorers, pioneers, and settlers. It is our nature to call the to look beyond tomorrow. I said that it is our calling to chase the horizon and keep pushing it ever onwards. Many of you agreed with me. Together, we took the first step once again. We are lifting our gaze to the skies. Once again, America is headed to space. <clears throat> well, 52%, huh? Since then, we've taken many steps, taken many more steps. <clears throat> NASA has been strengthened and remolded into a leading life for science and exploration in this country and the world. We've recruited the best scientists, brightest engineers, and a team of astronauts that is second to none. We've given them enough funding to get them to work. That work has already been born, bearing, or bearing fruit. <clears throat> a great many steps have already been taken. We are closer than ever to the stars. It's time to avenge Apollo and take back a rifle place as a pioneers and explorers of the solar system. Our Artemis program has made further strides towards that objective and will extend our reach further there than ever before. I can say now with confidence that America will soon put a man on the moon. While we will not be the first there, our conquest of America's natural satellite will show our intent to look beyond tomorrow once again. We will be pioneers. We will be the explorers of our solar system. We will conquer the moon and once we get there, we will still look to the horizon. It is our calling. <clears throat> Nice. Also, since we're here, still can't improve, huh? Four, four, two billion, huh? All right. So that's looking pretty good. Presidential elections looking pretty good too. Ah, oh, there it was. Yeah, seventy-two. Yeah, there it is. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Anything else here yet? No. We almost everything researched so far, which is not bad, but eighty-five percent is pretty nice. Staffing military funding? No thanks. You know what's good? Do this one too, because he can. Oh, okay, we're not doing an election thing, huh? Oh boy. We don't have that much time, actually. If you look at it, we don't have a lot of time for the program anymore. Yeah, for this one. What do you mean we don't have enough money? We have more than enough money. Increase our starting man preparedness by 10. 
We have 2375 million, not billion, I almost said million. Oh, that's Supreme Court Justice, going to that, please go ahead. A liberal, they wrote uh, several pieces and they passed away. That sucks. Bring more technicians. All right. And we'll go with the Heartbreak of Apollo. So we gotta go another liberal, because now there's four and four, so we need another lib. Um, you know what? We'll do that anyways for now. That's fine. Three two days left. Fifty two percent goes up to Oh, why can't we do this one? Come on, man. Five fifteen. Go fifteen. Go fifteen, that'd be good. That'd be very good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Heartbreak of Apollo. Call the call in the country. Public support increases significantly in greater infrastructure. Proof of rocket infrastructure will be unlocked. Yeah. We've accomplished more for space flight than most nations ever will, but we cannot lose our momentum now. It's time to play even higher. And to do that, we need to improve the infrastructure that supports NASA. Larger runways will support specialized aircraft that can safely transport critical rocket parts. And improved research facilities allow us to test larger rocket engines, fabricate parts with even more precision, and overcome the engineering challenges that have shackled us to Earth for too long. Nice. Equipment and expertise will improve. Good stuff. We could launch it and see if it does well. If it doesn't do well, then, you know, obviously we can reload, but still. Too bad in real life, you can't reload in re for realsies. Alright, anything else? Let's see, 12 million is pretty nice. Eh, looking not too bad around here. Uh, and we'll go with the liberal option. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to hurt us that badly. I mean, we get over 2.4 a day. My goodness. That is just so yummy, yummy, yummy. We don't even have to do like the whole South American mission for the CIA to get more political power. Like we have a ton of PP. It's kind of ridiculous. And you know what? I kind of like it. Upgrading our infrastructure. Very, very good. Six days left. The ghost of Apollo. I still can't shake it completely. The two engineers were three beers into their evening at the officer's mess. Don't get me wrong. I love being back. Nothing could compete with working on a space mission, but I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop. <clears throat> what other shoe, man? I'm not sure I follow. I keep forgetting that you weren't here for Apollo. Okay, so, I'll try to explain. The last time we tried something like this, we lost. Plain and simple. We were too slow to start, and we couldn't make the progress we needed in time to compete with the Germans. We did our best and failed. That's those things for a lot of people, me included. To make matters worse, it seemed like the whole program lost its importance in that moment. The second Kona set foot on the moon, our launches started getting pushed back and then canceled. Funding dried up almost overnight. Instead of Pioneers, we were all also RANs. <clears throat> and that made plain and uncomfortable truth. Apollo is never about a science or human achievement. That was just window dressing for a pissing contest with the Nazis. How else to explain the sudden loss of interest after they were first? I understand that that was a hard time, but we've got our guy in the big chair now. Glenn's serious about all this. I know, I know. I just can't shake it completely. We'll get it right this time. We promise. We will get it right. 77% nice. I want to make sure that this is perfect before we launch it. Because next time we should go even better. I still understand why we cannot invest into Gemini Mark II suits. Because we got that unlocked. 7%. Eh, that's not bad. After upgrading this whole infrastructure thing, Project Viking, unmanned missions are not flash. You cannot think for themselves. It cannot be the face of the space program, but they offer several other advantages. The main one being that we can test out our systems without having to unnecessarily risk the lives of our astronauts. We're planning the most ambitious exploration project in history, and it would be foolish to embark on this great journey without making at least a few trial runs. Directing more funding to our probe division will allow us to develop the sort of data we need for the safest possible landing we can get. Very true. Reserve fleets. Nothing like investing into a lot of naval stuff. This is all for uh, the future, yeah. Totally for the future. 70 days left. Oh, we could try. You know what? We could try it after that one. Cutting edge tanks. Okay, yeah. That'd be good. We need more research, but if we can be successful with getting that one done, that'd be really great. That'd be go 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 great $45 billion in reserves. Yeah, don't make sure it's not shrinking. Um, can we do this? Get more army research speed, naval speed. Cut down on this just a little bit more. Does this improve our spending at all? Honestly, not really. Look at all that. Real GDP growth does not go up at all. Yeah, we get deficit, so there's not too much of a point to do it. So if we do that, maybe. Alright, and then Project Viking. Anything else here first before we do anything else? Because we gotta keep it eye on like a hawk. 
Call the country. While our courageous explorers set off on the journey of a lifetime, they should not go alone. The American people have been disaffected and demoralized for too long. The President Glenn will address the nation and make them know that the country needs him. Our heroes of science and progress will inspire the nation, and our population's spirits shall soar with the rockets to the greater heights than ever before. Nice. 84%. Ooh, 5 prepared. 23 preparedness! Oh! Building a custom facility for a rocket, we can ensure that every step of construction will be taken with care and precision. Ooh, for 55 days. Uh, you know what? Let's save. 80 some odd percent is pretty good. You know, we gotta save a little bit of time here, maybe. So, let's try. Launch Diana. Mm, come on. Dancing Among the Stars. If you want to know about that, please go ahead. Forward on to heaven. Awesome. 50% chance to get plus 1% st uh, percent stability and more political power. Okay, so we get more liberal democracy, maybe. So right now we're at 45%. 46%. Or 45 and a half. That's not bad. I'll still take that. Great. Rocket status. Cool. Do both these. 240 million. That's not bad. Can't get that too as well. Alright. Our rocket has been recovered. Oh, we got to get recovered too. Oh, that's not good. Bring them technicians. So, hopefully we get the rocket back soon. Uh, we would like the rocket, please. Maybe we should have recovered the rocket first before we send them out. Maybe. Maybe. Keep building, building, building. Mission orders. Okay, here we go. So we're going to this place. We've got 67 research points and 15 public support from the man mission. Nice. 99%. We need more money, though. Oh, boy. Now we need more money. Oh, we're getting to Diana again immediately. Not a bad idea. You know what? We can do it again immediately? What is this one? Gives an increase to our preparedness for all missions. 74 already. We were pretty good that time. Mm. I think we're still going to need even more time after this one to do this one. Project Ares? Yeah, we need to do Project Ares, so we need to do Diana three times. We're going to immediately just do it again. Immediately. We don't have enough time to just not do it, so. We got to go on and try to. Ooh, ooh, it's cool. Ooh, that's not good. Inflation's a little high. I don't like that. Of course, we still have feeling the effects of the oil crisis, which should dissipate as time goes over the overall, but still. I want to invest all this money, but we cannot. What happens if we do this? Even if we max it all out, we don't get any more growth. Oh, of, of arm expenditures we do. I invest in the Navy. Okay, so if you invest in everything, then you get some more growth. I don't know about that, man. Hmm. That's a lot, though. That's quite a bit. Yeah, that's quite a bit. 90%, 90%. Project Viking, good. Call in the country. Now, we're gonna focus on other stuff here, too. Project Ares. The time has come, the crowning achievement of the human American space program, the pinnacle of human technological development. Project Ares is ready for launch. <clears throat> Our new crew travels with the prayers of every American in the eyes of the entire world are upon them. We've proven we can equal the heights of the American or the German space program. Now the American Eagle must soar to far greater heights. Our technicians, engineers, and launch personnel have been preparing for this mission for their entire careers. The Red Planet lies within our grasp, but we cannot let it slip through our fingers. The flag of our nation, standing tall on Mars, millions of miles from our home, shall reaffirm our status as the greatest country in the world. Godspeed, gentlemen, and start the countdown. We're definitely going to need that one. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's the of September though, but we got time. Which will probably, and there'll be one more episode after this to make sure we actually get there. Because we gotta do all those other focuses first. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna do that. Keep doing that one. Because we need to save some of the money, but we're still okay on money. We're still okay on it. 22 days left. Oh my goodness. 20 days left. Economy wise. Can we invest money, please? Oh, yes. There we go. So let's invest in. 40 billion? So now we're at minus 0.326. Okay, okay, that was quite a bit. 40 billion gives you a little bit more growth, which is not bad. So quite a bit of surplus. I mean, I don't mind not having a big surplus as long as we get some growth, but like. That gives us honestly not that much more. It's not really worth it. Call in the country, Project Aries. So we gotta wait a little bit. So. After that one, uh, the cost, more cost, more atomic power. The power of the atom. It's fully focused on atomic power through the lens of the bombing of Pearl Harbors to miss the force for the trees. Nuclear energy, if harnessed correctly, could provide nearly limitless energy for the millions of Americans still suffering from blackouts or uninterrupted 
interrupt the deliveries of coal and oil. It's not a time to reduce or, or redouble our scientific efforts to harness the power of the atom for both its peaceful and warlike applications to succor our people and still, and still fear into our enemies. Beaconsfield, Iowa. Peggy Whitston. As it always been a while, child, Keith and Beth counted their lucky stars when they lived on a farm with plenty of room for their daughter to rule or run around to her heart's content. Then, however, she was compl sat completely transfixed in front of their old black and white TV set. These images, never before seen by the public, show the moon from the astronaut's perspective. The voice of the narrator crackled from the worn-out speakers. The pock-marked surface of our only natural satellite is completely lifeless, singularly unsuited for human habitation, and yet, man is a foot there. Eberhard Kolna became the first man on the moon in 62, planting the flag of the German Reich on the surface. But it won't be alone up there for long. The same Artemis program that gave us these images will soon send an American astronaut to plant the, plant the stars and stripes up there alongside it. Only when the program was completely done did Peggy stir. She rose slowly before returning to her parents. Mommy, Daddy, when I grew up, I'm going to be an astronaut. She spoke with absolute confidence, as if stating a plain of fact, rather than an aspiration. Sure you will, but tonight's already way past your bedtime, Keith answered. Getting up to her, getting up to her, uh, getting up to get her settled into bed. It didn't take long, I'll tell you, he said, upon returning to the living room. I've never seen her focus on anything like that space stuff. Me neither. You know, I was about her age when the bomb hit Pearl Harbor. She tore my world right down. I don't think I've ever quite shook that feeling. I wonder if this would be a moment like that for her. Maybe she'll turn out different for me. Not too different, I hope, Keith Smod. Don't want her taking after her dad instead. Not like you, not like that, you bonehead. Uh, different about the world. More hopeful. Who knows? Maybe she will be an astronaut one day. Maybe she will. Maybe, just maybe. Cool. Let's keep going on. Keep going on. Increase public support. Why not? Oh, look at that. Let's see. Increase budget. Yeah, why not? Sounds good to me. Nice. Cutting edge tanks. Decrease of costs. Good. Yeah, yeah. Having the cost reduce. Good, too. Yeah. Test the rocket. Okay. Why can't we do this one? 23%. No, 615. 45. 50. That's a long day, time, though. 55 days. Um. So that'd be. Do we have anything for 10 here? Yeah. 10. Cool. Construct facilities. Yeah. So that's what we got to do. Joint testing. Yeah. Joint testing is fine. Joint testing is good. Not bad at all. $2,400 million. Pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. Project Ares. Man mission. So we got to do three Dianas, which we I did one. We're on the second one already. 20, poverty is about 20%, which is not bad, actually. 45% is pretty good, too. Cool. 90% mm -hmm. approval rate. Not bad. Pretty good, I'd say. Pretty darn good. Oh, anything else up here? No, fine. I guess bring more technicians just in case. 9%? Why not? Project Aries, good. The power of the atom. Atom, 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 atom. Look at all the stuff we can do here. Ah. But, let's see. We shall have it all. Purchasing additional uranium. Federal pilot reactors. Uh, even if politicians and scientists are convinced of the benefits of nuclear power, America as a whole remains wary of the atomic project. With the bombing of Pearl Harbor seared into the public conscience, the process of winning the people over to the side of progress will take time and patience as we demonstrate the safety and uh, benefits of nuclear energy via a program of federally funded pilot reactors in several cities across America. Which would be a good thing. Um, 20 more days for this is... Eh, takes so long. I just want to go to space. Why can't we just be Glenn and just rocket into space, man? Just just rocket into there. How's the economy looking? 5%? 0.5%, I mean. 0.5%. That sucks so much. Social spending? We could do that. I mean... We still get what? Oh, as long as we get 20 billion still. And, uh... Roughly 20 billion in surplus. I'm kind of okay with that. Spend a little more. I mean, hopefully it'll help with growth, but... No. How much are we going to do about that? How many more days we got? Five days left. That's good. Here, intelligence analysis, analysis. Why not? We're done with all the research things, so... How many research points do we have? We can't even see. Whatever. Okay, so 67%. You know what? We can launch it. Why can't we get the Gemini suits? Yeah, I might just use cons commands for that, maybe. Because that's not cool. Alright, launch it into two. Come on, don't screw it up. Dance among the stars. Forward into heaven. That was tech two. You one more. And we gotta get the rocket back too. So. 
Daggers on all sides across the Pacific Star agents have stated the highest probability for the location of the Japanese Empire Station and nuclear capabilities would most likely be in very specific islands, such as Wake or Midway, when the mainland will con contain them at the cities of Kushiro or Hachinoa. Uh, Nelson Rockefeller said of the concern and expression worn by President Glenn regarding the Germans, sir, they would most likely have spread out their nuclear weapons across multiple fronts they have to deal with, however, our main concern will most likely be, be within secret coverage within their French puppet or even the near northern sea, and Wilhelmshaven to launch into the Atlantic and prepare for a nuclear strike by sea. The report laid out by the Secretary of State did not smother the worries held by the President of the United States, rivals, and nuclear capabilities. Years of attention did not play to the favor of peace and common manhood. Within the enemy's eyes, as far as the President was concerned, however, if the years of experience piloting aircraft taught John Glenn anything, it was not to panic in the middle of a crisis unless you seek to crash and burn. Another lesson taught to John Glenn during his time as a pilot was a simple rule, but an effective one. The man with the bigger gun is going to win the fight. With the air capabilities already being improved with funding for NASA, there remains but one obstacle ahead for the nuclear arms race, nuclear power itself. Glenn picked up his office phone and spoke into it. Hello, ma'am. Could you pass me through to Jar uh, Jarvis? Or Jarvitz? Javits? Yeah, absolutely, sir. The defense budget more than allows the research program to go through. And we could absolutely coordinate with them to work towards a greater missile supply. And about the nuclear power, the r report we just received measures of approval rating to be considerable, meaning that you have seem to have to go have the go on the project, sir. How should we proceed, Mr. President? Let's take a piece, Mr. Secretary. Yes. This budget? Oh, yeah. So we gotta wait for the other one, Federal Pilot Reserve, and Green Disney is gonna do. We shall have it all. Nuclear technology is, and by large, dependent on a single natural resource, uranium. The means for securing domination over our rivals in nuclear technology must start from seizing any and all natural deposits of this mineral or buying it out of all of our rivals. And what we cannot have, we must ensure that our enemies cannot make use of either. Big oil versus nuclear power. For over half a century, the world ran on one resource, oil. Even today, petroleum is a vital for the economy to keep the country's cars, ships, trains, and planes moving to refine into chemicals, plastics and synthesized rubber, and to burn in the power plants to provide electricity to millions, natural gas, and provide heating. All of modern life depends on the oil industry. But now President Glenn is moving aggressively in his plans to build nuclear reactors everywhere. <clears throat> to power the nation with atomic energy through the National Nuclear Commission. That is an increasingly worrying concern for the boards and stockholders of the big oil companies like Exxon, Texaco, Mobil, and Standard Oil of California. And if America is less reliant on oil products for electricity and heating, then a huge section of the market will disappear nearly overnight, and will lose millions if not billions of dollars. Analysts pre predicted that it would be years if not decades for further power, nuclear power, to become cost-effective and the oil companies have banked on that. Then Glenn came in, subsidizing the building of reactors and the price of nuclear energy is dropping fast, soon. It would be cheaper to build a big old expensive reactor than deal with the minimal maintenance cost it would be to keep prospecting and shipping oil refineries and then to power plants. That's the last thing the big oil companies need. Of course, they'll never say that it was for the bottom line, no. Instead, it'll be talking about possible dangerous radiation and meltdowns, the security of oil reserves in Texas, or the use of government funds to subsidize something that the private market would better handle. Big oil, working through shale companies, are going to fund Glenn's opponents such as the MPP, who are not as keen on spending billions to build reactors all over America. Anything to save the industry that has powered America and the world's less far into the 20th century. Oil must flow. Public support goes down. Oh, well. This is for the future. Can't just think about the modern day. You've got to think about the future as well. 20 billion, still not bad. Which means the effectiveness of these guys should go up, right? Right. Mission rewards. 70 and 15. Nice. Good, good, good. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, we this one. Let's finally conquer the frontier. Four successful Ares missions. Hold on, let's take a look here. We're a little more unified. Cool. Um, do we do two? I think we did two. We need to do one more for Diana. Yeah. We want just one more, right? I could be wrong. Am I wrong about that? I think we did two. This will give us more base preparedness. We should have done one earlier, but whatever. So take this last one. Ares is expensive. Last Diana. Last Diana. Cool. Not bad, though. Not bad. Mm, but since we're waiting, federal pilot program. We shall have it all. We shall absolutely have it all. I might do a few of these off-screen, but we'll see what happens. Um, keep building, 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 building. Lots of nuclear reactors all over the country. Big ol' ain't got anything on us. Yeah, yeah this is not bad. Not as much in reserve, that's fine. I'd much rather have growth in the economy anyways. Look at all that. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, look at all this going up. Oh, we're about to get better industrial experience. Innovative industry? Yes, please. Agriculture is getting worse, though. Which does kind of suck. This facility is good. We shall have it all, everybody. Better pilot program? Yes, no, maybe so. Joint testing. 
the behemoth. And over there, Mr. President, you can see the steam turbines being operated by a multitude of our plant's workers. The turbines are using a process extracting steam from the nuclear core of the facility and pushing it through to convert it to energy. The director of the nuclear facility said to John, President John Glenn, who looked over onwards with a mouth that curved into a gape smile of wonderment. <clears throat> All around him, President Glenn admired the beauty that was American progress. The bright sparks of welding equipment lit his eyes, while the mass of turbines captured the President's imagination with the grandiose designs of the future. As years moved on, the one by one, Glenn can't help but recall the beauty of his childhood in 1928, when he flew in his first airplane alongside his father and looked outwards into the beautiful Ohioan landscape, with the heavens above him and the powerful figures beneath him like a man watching over an anthill. So now, as I said before, Mr. President, the Dresden Generating Station and myself, Executive Director Ferguson, greatly appreciate your visitation to the reactor and the approval for its creation as we hope to serve the great citizens of Illinois, the Executive Director said, shaking the President from his nostalgia. Oh, yeah, speaking of which, I was want wanting to ask, how many people will this provide power for, the President asked. Ah, oh, well, Mr. President, the full potential of the facility is still being estimated, however. At startup, we believe the facility should be able to power all of Morris, as well as a great deal of Chicago, resulting in current estimates reaching about 1.5 million homes. The director's statement shocked the President. 1.5 million people, 1.5 million functioning households, 1.5 million happy Americans to live another day in warmth and happiness thanks to the work of nuclear energy. Soon, the President stood within dreams of American households across the nation being able to thank the government for both providing a healthy and happy means of energy production, but an entire way of life, with America standing at the top of the globe by taking new steps into the future of progress, glory, and potential. A new age for the U.S. was already ready to begin. Uh, Mr. President, are you okay? Director Ferguson asked as the President stared at the window of the facility. Mr. Ferguson, have we discussed an increase in funding? <clears throat> oh, look at that. We get annual GDP growth factor. Ooh! Illinois gets a reactor and an enrichment plant. Ooh! Stock buy will go up. Public support will increase. <clears throat> increase will go up. Whatever. <clears throat> Well, let's see. Let's finish out with subsidizing construction. The benefits of nuclear power are immense. But so are the startup costs. Not every state or local municipality in America will be able to shoulder the cost of ensuring a safe and stable power supply for all of its residents, thankfully. The federal government can step in to fill the gap, both to ensure a steady demand for the expertise in the nuclear field and to win a few votes along the way in a next-gen targeting solution. Circular error probable. The bane of any ballistics targeting exercise. While some would argue that accuracy is overrated with the weapons, explosive forces measured in megatons of TNT, Accuracy will forever and always be a crucial indicator of a weapon system maturity. The more missiles we can accurately deliver on target, the more confident we can end a conflict with a single stroke. Well, the supercomputers of NASA already use to calculate project trajectories. It can easily be repurposed for the work of nuclear warfare. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we will shoot for the red planet. Thanks for watching. Have a great, 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 great rest of your day.